Today I want to talk again about one of the most underrated headsets that I consider one of the best ones for new VR users who want to try computer-based VR or PC VR. DPVR E4 was released earlier last year and when I reviewed it I was surprised at how many unique features it packs. While not perfect, recently they've released a major firmware update and improved the overall quality of E4's performance, which makes it an even more attractive headset for first-time PC VR users. So what makes DPVR E4 so unique? First, it features this cool visor flip design that I haven't seen in any other headsets other than the industry-grade HoloLens 2. It makes it super convenient to quickly flip it up if you want to check something on your PC or in your surroundings while playing. Although I think it is important to note that any moving parts in a headset present a risk of breaking down if used excessively over time. Still, I think that it is a very unique feature that definitely makes this headset stand out among the rest. Another purely visual feature that does not affect the practicality of this headset in any way is this RGB light at the top. This glowing stripe on the front of the visor is changing colors while you're playing games. And you can even set up the patterns using DPVR software, making you look super cool and futuristic while you're playing. Speaking of controllers, another cool feature is that in addition to the standard mode, the software allows you to switch it to either joystick or touchpad modes to play mainstream VR games. And it even provides you with a comprehensive list of popular games with a search bar that indicates which controller mode is recommended for each individual game. Granted, standard mode would work best for most of them, but not all. For example, Pavlo VR is recommended to play with a joystick mode and so is Phasmophobia, but The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners would perform best in the touchpad mode. And on top of that, the software even allows you to change the vibration strength to your liking, which is not only cool for accessibility, but also a way to prolong your controller battery life. Oh, and also in the original review, I've commented on poor vibration quality of the controllers. I found it to be too weak and inconsistent when I was playing some rhythm games like Beat Saber or Synth Riders. It was just more noticeable in those games. I've mentioned it was one of the major flaws of this headset and I was happy to find that with a recent firmware update this controller vibration issue was fixed. It now functions normally. One thing I probably like most about DPVR headset is how easy it is to set up and jump into gaming compared to many other PC VR headsets I tried. It has very clear step-by-step -step instructions that walk you through every step of the way from connecting your headset to a PC, checking your PC compatibility, to running Steam VR. In my experience, from talking to a lot of people, my conclusion is that most of them steer clear from PC VR headsets because they feel intimidated to go through this setup process with a PC. And for a good reason. With most headsets, connecting them to a PC is a thing of rocket science. Checking PC settings, Steam VR setup steps, arranging and pairing base stations, controllers, and so on can be really daunting and it's extremely overwhelming for a first-time VR user. And to this day, I find DPVR E4 the least complicated PC VR headset to set up. Another unique feature is that E4 has an easy room scanning and mapping setup, which is rare for a PC VR headset. It reminded me of how easy it is to set up Quest 2. E4 features external cameras that allow you to see your surroundings in pass-through, set up your floor height and your room boundaries. It is refreshing to use the PC VR headset it with decent tracking that does not use base stations. But those things alone don't make this headset stand out as much, unless I mention its price. Consider this, it's a very comfortable headset straight out of the box, second only to Bobo VR headstrap on Quest 2 maybe. It has a display cable, meaning it will offer you uncompressed quality image, but also inside-out tracking, meaning you don't need base stations and external controllers. Everything you need is in the box, and all of this is for $5.99 US dollars. But here Here's the best part. Between August 17 and 23rd, this headset is on sale with $50 off. But for the Disco VR channel only, DPVR is also giving an additional $69 off if you use my promo code. What's cool is that you can stack up these discounts and get E4 for as low as $480. I was happy to partner with DPVR on this campaign because I have already reviewed this headset in the past in my unsponsored and unbiased review where I discuss pros and cons of E4. And you can go ahead and watch that video, it will be linked in the description, and you will
will see that I genuinely like that headset, especially as a Star Trek PC VR headset. It's in no way a competitor to Vario Aero or Pimax Crystal, of course, in terms of visual quality, but if you want an inexpensive PC VR headset that's easy to set up and that will make games look better than Quest 2 without breaking a bank, then I cannot think of a better headset than DPVR E4. So from now until August 23rd, stack up those discounts and get this headset for the lowest price ever. I really don't think that they will be doing this big of a discount again anytime soon. And now back to the unique features of E4. We still got a couple. We know it's super easy to run Steam VR games. You simply click on this Steam button and everything is up and running. But also it has something called VR Player and it is basically a theater mode for your local files. So say you have some videos on your PC that you want to watch. You simply run your VR Player, locate the video and play it on a gigantic screen. As simple as that. And it also has a 3D mode, 360 mode, all kinds of different immersive video formats to view for your pleasure. I would also love for it to have some kind of a streaming service, like if you could watch YouTube videos, but this is just like a local feature, so this is still pretty good. One interesting feature is digital IPD adjustment and Steam VR FOV adjustment. Pretty much the developers decided to skip the motors and allow users to change the IPD digitally. I suspect that this was done to maintain the small form factor and light weight of the headset. So instead of physically moving the lenses inside the headset, the software digitally manipulates the images displayed to each eye. The images for each eye are shifted horizontally to create the illusion that the virtual environment is at the correct distance and scale to the user's eyes. So as I was adjusting IPD using this little tool, I was looking at this hexagon and I had to stop when it looked the most natural and three-dimensional. It worked okay for me, but I think that I have a pretty standard IPD of 62, so I'm really not sure how well that will work for more extreme IPDs. While I found all these features to be the most unique compared to other headsets, if you consider buying DPVR E4, I would recommend you watch my comprehensive video review right here, but keep in mind that the latest firmware did fix many of the issues that I discussed there. And also, don't forget about this sale that's going on for the next week and stack up those discounts so that you get the best deal for DPVR E4. See you next time!